Hello there. My name is Hunter Buren. I'm a HubSpot Implementation Specialist here at Evenbound. And today I'm going to walk you through how to create custom sales reports inside of HubSpot. When you are navigating the reporting tab inside of HubSpot, you'll see that there are multiple different sections of this tab. So let's talk through what they are and how the, what those mean. Um, the dashboard section, this is going to showcase all of the reports that you have inside of HubSpot, and it's a place to house multiple reports in one section. So as we can see here, I'm on, in our demo portal, I'm on our sales manager dashboard. This dashboard holds multiple different reports. So when you are building out reporting in HubSpot, make sure to build out the dashboard first and then add the reports to it. In addition to that, the reporting tab has a lot of other sections of reporting, which we can dive into into another video. Um, the main section of the reporting dashboard, when you're building custom reports that you're going to focus on, is this dashboard section. Once you navigate to your dashboard section, as you can see, you can drop down and select which dashboard you're creating your reports on. On here, we're on our sales manager dashboard. If the dashboard that you want to create doesn't exist yet, you can create that dashboard. You can add templated reports to it, and then you can also add your custom reports. Let's say we want to add a custom sales report to this sales manager dashboard that doesn't exist yet. What we're going to do is navigate towards this add report section and click create report. This create report section brings us to the report creation page. As we can see, there are two different sections of this record, report creation page. One, you can utilize one of the five different report builders that HubSpot has dependent on your tier. Creating custom reports is available at pro and above tools, so you will need to utilize, have a pro level of a HubSpot tier in order to create these custom reports from scratch. In addition, there are a lot of different reporting templates that HubSpot has already set for you. So as we can see in this demo portal that we have, we have about 250 different templated reports that we're able to choose from. What I recommend is before going and just adding, going and creating a report from scratch, I'd recommend looking through the templates to see if that information that you want to report on is available as a templated report. That way it's a lot easier. So for example, if we want to look for uh, all of the templated reports on closed deals, for example, we can filter out these templated reports either by searching. So if we look up closed deals, that brings that 250 reports down to 89. So it's a lot more manageable. Um, we can also instead filter by the sources of data. So if we just want to pull contact reports, if we just want to pull deal reports, we can do that here as well. Let's say we want to this report that we have here. It looks similar to what we want to pull into a report. Um, but before we add it to our dashboard, we want to make some changes. The nice thing about HubSpot's templated reports is you can use these as building blocks for the reports that you have inside of your account. So let's say I want to add this closed revenue by month uh, to my sales manager dashboard, but I want to edit it a little bit. I click into the report and it will take me to a very basic report editor. If we click customize, that will take us to the actual report editor, which we'll walk through in a second when I'm creating a report from scratch. As we can see here though, these templated reports that HubSpot has, what you can do is change the filters to edit what data is pulled into these reports. So for example, if I want to edit some of this, if this is the overall information that I want to pull in, but I want to change the filters a little bit, I can do that on this right hand side. Let's say instead of this year as the date range for the close date, 
I want to see is the last 90 days. I'll select rolling date range and select last 90 days. That now pulls in all of the deals in our demo account that have closed in the last 90 days. And let's say instead of reporting on this weekly, we want to change this to a monthly frequency. I can drop down that monthly frequency. As we can see, it's now breaking it out by month. And in addition to this, if there's any additional filters we want to add onto here, I can add those right here. If I click and into the filters, and let's say I only want to pull in our demo sales pipeline, any deals in that pipeline, I can look for that pipeline property, scroll all the way down to find it, and then we'll do is any of demo sales pipeline, apply that filter, and now it is only pulling in the deals that have closed in the last 90 days, frequency is monthly and only on the demo sales pipeline. If we save this, it will give us the option to change the name, add a description, and then add it to an existing dashboard. So we're going to add this to the sales manager dashboard, save and add. We can click go to our dashboard to see this report on that dashboard, which I'll show you in a bit. Now, let's say that report that you want to build on the, your and add to your dashboard, you can't find it in this templates. There's no reports in the templates that are pretty similar to the report that you want to pull. So you're going to instead create a report from scratch. So let's go through what these different report creation tools are. And then we're going to dive into the single object report builder. Single object report builder. This is a simple editor. It's the most easy to use out of all of the report builders inside of HubSpot, and it allows you to report on one object. So for example, if you just want to pull a contacts report, you can use single object. The custom report builder is similar to single object. However, you can do two additional things. One, it adds some additional functionality when you're building. You can add more groups of filters if you're filtering it out by different things. And then in addition, you can record, report across multiple objects with the custom report builder. So let's say you want to report on contacts associated to deals in your HubSpot account. That's where you would use the custom report builder as opposed to the single report builder because you're reporting on information across multiple objects. Customer journey reports, that is going to show you a more complex version of the funnel reports, which funnel reports showcases conversion rates between lifecycle stages and deal stages inside of your HubSpot account. The, and then lastly, the attribution reports will pull, show you which assets are creating contacts and creating deals inside of your account, and then attribute the revenue and the customers back to those specific assets. So as I mentioned, we're just going to dive into the single object report builder today. Let's say the report we want to build is built is recently co created contacts by record source and broken out by owner. So what we would do, click this single object report. We're going to select the one object that we're reporting on. Again, single object only allows you to report on one. Custom report lets you report, report across multiple. So we're gonna select contacts and click next. This now takes us to step one of building our report, which is adding in the properties that we want to see in the end report. As I mentioned, the report that we want to pull here is recently created contacts broken out by the owner and the record source. So let's pull in those properties that will live in the end result of this report. One of those being owner. You'll click add contact property and so we'll find that specific property. In addition, I'm going to select that other property that we're pulling in. We're going to pull in that record source property. I can pull that in here. And then if there's anything that we don't really need in the uh, report builder, eventually I can get rid of it. Like, for example, we're not going to be using lifecycle stage. 
Now that we have all of the properties that we are reporting on, we're going to update the filters of this specific report in this filters section. So as we can see, every report has one required filter and that's a date range property. Uh, this date range property can be changed. So instead of create date, if we wanna pull in by the last contacted date, the last activity date, we can do that. Usually um, create date is a good starting point for these reports. However, for example, with last activity date, if you wanna pull in all of your contacts that have been recently reached out to, you can utilize that. I'm going to update uh, the last activity date to be uh, the last 365 days. So now this is going to pull in all of the contacts that were created because uh, we're utilizing create date, not last activity date, in the last 365 days. Then after we set the required filters, we can add additional filters here as well. For example, if I am breaking this out by owner and then by uh, record type or record source, I want to just pull in, for example, all of the contacts that have an owner known. I don't want to pull in any of the unknown owners in this specific report. So what I would do is add a filter, look up that owner property, type in contact owner, and then click is known and apply filter. So now that we have updated these filters, we are now pulling in all of the contacts created in the last year and that the owner is known. So we've set our filters and added our properties that we want to pull into the report. Now let's go to actually build out that report by clicking on the visualization tab. In this section, you're gonna select what is the type of report you wanna pull. I'll keep this as a bar report by now, for now. And then in addition, you're gonna start pulling in those properties. First thing we're gonna pull in, count of contacts, because we want to obviously see the amount of contacts based on that are going to be in this report. Next thing we wanna pull in is contact owner. And then we're going to break this out by record source. As we can see, it's now pulling in the contact owner they, uh, and the record source. However, they're next to each other. And let's say instead of this, we want the total amount of contacts owned by Zach in this case, but we want it broken out by this uh, that record source property. So what we'll do here is edit our display options. I'm going to click stacked, and now we can see it's pulling the total amount of contacts that each of these sales reps own and stacking them and breaking them out by what is the percentage of that specific record source property. Once we have our report all set, we've added our filters, we've chosen the properties that we're reporting on, we've updated the display options, we're going to title this report uh, contacts by owner, by record uh, source. Then we'll click save, add this to our dashboard, add a description if necessary, click save and add, and now we can go to our dashboard. When we load up our dashboard and go all the way to the bottom, we can now see the two different reports that we have added. This closed revenue by month, which is in the last 90 days and the contacts by owner by record source. Once your reports are on your dashboard, you can edit them, you can change how they look. For example, if you want to move a report up, you can just drag and drop it. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, you can drag it on the bottom right. In addition to this, if you want to edit some of the filters of your report, you can click this view and filter button this will take you to that uh, simple filter editor where we were looking through on the templated reports. This is where you can quick change some of those, uh, those properties that you have pulled in that you're filtering by. You can also click the customize button to get back into the main report editor. 
And then lastly, on the dashboard, you can see that each report has these individual three dots. If we click on that, it's going to give us some options for these reports. You can see all of the contacts that are in the report or deals or companies, whatever the object you're reporting on. You can refresh the report, you can clone it out, and then use that clone to edit and change some of your properties. You can rename, you can export it, you can share this, which allows you to email out your report. You can also email it out on a consistent basis, and then you can change some ownership and add it to additional dashboards or remove it. That is Evenbound's crash course into creating custom sales reports inside of HubSpot. I hope you found this uh, video entertaining and informative on how to build out these different reports inside of the HubSpot tool. There is a lot to do here and we're just scratching the surface. We've only gone over the single object report, the creator, the simple report creator, and as you can see, there's four different other types. So there's definitely a lot more to learn here. However, I hope this helps you set the ground level, set that base knowledge to understand how reporting works inside of HubSpot and how you can use it to pull the information that you need. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this helped you out.